Imagine it. You're walking through the fog. A character jumps out at you. Ooh, you're at Horror Nights. <laughs> Scary. <laughs> hey, everybody. Welcome to the Half Day Adventures podcast. My name is Alex. And my name is Christian. And here we are talking about Universal Orlando's Halloween Horror Nights 31. Right, yeah. Today we're going to be talking about all the houses, all the scare zones. The shows, the food, a little bit of a review over everything. Uh, we're about a month into the event at this point. Um, Christian and I both have the ultimate frequent fear pass, which allows us to go every night of the event, so we choose. Um, and we have been able to go quite a bit, I would say, so far. Yeah, uh, we've gone a lot of times and we've done all the houses now and we've done all the scare zones. Uh, we got a good amount of food too, drinks. Mm -hmm. So we just wanted to jump on here and get a little bit of a review going. And this will probably be the first of a couple Halloween Horror Nights podcasts. Um, yeah, I believe we're going to have some special guests come through. Yeah, we'll see. Um, but this will be our starter one. So uh, we'll be breaking down all the houses, scare zones, um, and like I said, giving a description of each. Um, and we're also going to go ahead and kind of give our ratings of all 10 houses and how we feel about them. At right. least right now. That could change by the end of the event. Of course, yeah. They're always um, getting better. They're getting used to the positions that they have. Mm -hmm. I feel like they definitely um, make some changes and unless you go through them quite a bit. Uh, I think it's hard to make a final decision, but um, yeah. All right. All right. Well, this year they started celebrating what? Halloween Horror Nights in September. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The event started at the beginning of September and it goes all the way to the last day of October, uh, Halloween. Um, and this year I think is a really exciting event. Um, I think that it's celebrating all things classic Halloween. Um, you can definitely see that. There's lots of pumpkins, skeletons, witches, and it looks to be drawing inspo from vintage 60s Halloween decor. Um, a lot of it's honestly seen in the merchandise and decor around the park. Yeah, to me, I don't know. It doesn't, doesn't feel as scary as the past couple of years. I feel like before it was a lot, you know, heavy rock, very like uh, in your face. And today, I mean, today, I mean, fuck. <laughs> this year. This year, sorry. Yeah, it um just doesn't feel like that. It feels no. like everyone's kind of laid back. That's what I'm saying. It feels more like Halloween, a little bit more milder. I don't know. It's more fun, though, I think. It doesn't have to be like death metal screaming in your face, but it's still a really good um I mean, atmosphere. I enjoy it. Yeah, I, I have a really good time. I, I look forward to this event every single year. And uh, I mean, it didn't just really disappoint me. I like the way they went this year. Mm hmm I think it's nice just getting away from that 80s theme because it was kind of getting a little tired. I mean, okay. it's cool, but how many times can you do it? Right, right. No, yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, I mean, otherwise in this year's event too, it is the 31st year. So it's not like we're celebrating a huge milestone, um, but we did not get an official icon uh, like we have in years prior. Speaking of icons, let's just get into it because some people will say that this event does have an unofficial icon uh, and he is seen in one of the first scare zones. So let's start talking about those scare zones. Yeah. I think he, uh, yeah. I think he looks pretty cool too, right? Yeah. Um, of course we're talking about the pumpkin Lord um, and the pumpkin Lord. He is seen in the first scare zone as you enter the park. Uh, that one is called horrors of Halloween. Right. Um, there are five this year as there have been years past, but Horrors of Halloween is going to be in Production Central near Minions. Um, and the description for that scare zone is the Pumpkin Lord, the spirit of Halloween, has taken over this year's event, summoning hordes of fiendish creatures. Terror has taken root. Right now. And and we've seen the Pumpkin Lord before, right? Mm -hmm. We have. We've seen him in the Wicked Growth Realm of the Pumpkin in 2020. Yes. And so that in the house, he, he looked really cool. He did. I, I'm going to be honest. I don't even really remember him. I mean, what? he was at the end. Yeah, he was at the end. But like, I wouldn't have remembered him as a standout character for me to be like, oh, let's bring him back as an icon. Mm, Obviously, uh, yeah. people did, though. I guess. Yeah. Um, but that was a really good house. Um, that was just last year. And I think that was one that we went in quite a few times. Last I think, year? Uh, I was in 2020. We're in 2022 right now. Well, there was a pandemic that kind of blurred everything together. Okay, so sure. that was like... I don't know. One of like the main years that I remember before they gave us Halloween and a half. Right, we won't okay. even go there. Okay. Um, but that was a very, very good house. Definitely, I think, a fan favorite. Um, and also who was a fan favorite was Lil Boo. Lil Boo's cute man. Um, he also could be argued to be this year's unofficial icon. Um, if you don't know who Lil Boo is, to put it plain and simple, he is a carved pumpkin uh, with two very large eyes and kind of just a very straight slit little mouth. Um, I wanted the hat that they have for the merchandise this year, and I can literally cannot find it. <laughs> yeah, anymore. he's on a lot of the merchandise. Uh, but the history of him, he was carved out by one of the, I think it was a team member, 
I don't know, somebody that worked for Universal. Um, they carved all these pumpkins and put them into a scare zone one year. I think it was, um, gosh, I don't even remember what it was called, but it was in the trick or treat scare zone, I think the following year. And then they reused him again and put him into the facade for wicked growth. Um, and of course, annual pass holders and people that keep returning find something that they love. And they hold on to that. And hold on to it. Right. And uh, gave him a little name. But, and... I mean, little boo's cute. I, I, I agree. Yeah, he's I like cute. Them. I like him. Um, but he is in that scare zone um, up at the top of the iconic signage that they have that actually dates all the way back to some of the first Halloween Horror Nights. Um, there's plenty of pumpkins again, and Lil Boo is up there with all of them right in the middle. So you can see him there. Yeah, cool. Um, but yeah. I don't know. It's an okay scare zone. It's nothing crazy. It features all of the characters that you'll find in the other scare zones we're going to talk about, but kind of just your preview. Walk into the park. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the next scare zone we have is Sweet Revenge. That one's uh, located in New York by Revenge of the Mummy in the Tribute Store. Um, and the theme, little synopsis, says the sweets from Major Sweets Candy Company have turned children into crazed killers. This Halloween's all trick, no treat, and total mayhem. Uh, this is one of the largest scare zones with the larger set pieces that you'll find. Um, and it ties into this year's tribute store. Right now, the tribute store story that they had, um, if you guys go to the unofficial, was it you know, unofficial Universal Orlando podcast, mm -hmm. they have the stories for these. And um, yeah, you were listening to it yesterday, right? I was listening to them. To be honest, I don't know the voices. I'm, I don't want, I don't mean to be mean, but the voices just, I couldn't keep up. I'm like, getting, it gets me tired, <laughs> sleepy. Well, what was it kind of about? I mean, uh, there was this whole backstory to it, which I guess you would never know unless you listened to that podcast. But. Right. Yeah. No, uh, I believe it was something about um, some kid's parents, I guess, was poisoned. He, he didn't know they were poisoned, but they died in the theater. Um, and he, I guess he grew up with a childhood friend that he met. It, it's complicated. He was a really sharp boy. He met someone who liked him and they became really good friends. Later on in life, he found out that his parents died from poisoning. Poisoning? Um, and then they started poisoning the, the, the little kid and the little girl, I guess, started poisoning everybody. Jeez. Yeah. And, um, his name is Major Sweets. I forgot her name, to be honest. Wait, the kid is Major Sweets? Yeah. The kid grows up to be Major Sweets and he actually owns like, the candy company. And then the mayor is like, oh, maybe we can turn the theater, the old tribute store into something, something cool. Yeah. This year's tribute store is themed around a dark ride. They got very in depth with this because even the tribute store from summer plays into this tribute store now. Um, what do you mean? Because the summer's tribute store at Universal was the theater, and then they turned the theater. Oh, you know what? Into the dark ride. That's, I did not put that together. You're right. It was a theater. Yeah. It had Jaws, ET. It had um, Back to the Future, mm -hmm. King and Kong. Apparently, there were like hidden little notes and things like that that kept getting added until the tribute theater. From summer. Dude, this is a whole revelation. I, I, know. I did not even understand thing. that. That's whole crazy. That's what I'm saying. If you don't read the lore and listen to the podcast, how would you know? How would they know? And yeah, like I said, I don't, I, I go to Halloween Horror Nights. I love Halloween Horror Nights, but I don't ever listen to the lore. So listening to the lore this year, uh, was really cool. Like I recommend if you guys are into that, definitely go to that podcast. I think it's the Universal Orlando unofficial podcast. Maybe, I don't know. Oh, it's the Discover Universal. No, I'm thinking about it. Hmm. And they're really good. They have really good stories about every house. They just came out with one, with one today about the tribute store. Hmm. Um, but I don't know. It's cool. I think everybody always thinks like Disney and their Imagineers think of all these like elaborate backstories for things. But Universal does it too. I just maybe don't think they promote themselves the best. They really don't know. Because again, like, how did we hear about it? We heard about it because someone was like out come walking out of the out of one of the houses and was like, houses, yeah. "Did you listen to the podcast?" They explain it all and I'm in my head. What podcast? That's very vague. How would I even know there was a podcast? Right. But yeah, for sure. The, it's really cool. The the Sweet Revenge scare zone. The only thing, the only problem I had is I, I've been, I mean, we're on TikTok. So we're trying to take videos of all, all these people getting scared. I feel like no one's getting scared and no one's coming after mm -hmm. you or anything. I mean, I don't know. I, I guess I'm not also somebody that's not really scared of Halloween Horror Nights, but I also feel that Halloween Horror Nights has really changed since everybody has been all about uh, social media because now I feel like the scare zones are just a place to make videos and take pictures and right but they don't want that right I mean I don't know if they want that but I mean me I guess if I just want to walk through and enjoy it I don't really want someone standing there with the camera clogging up the whole area because I do feel like this is a cool scare zone but it does get very congested um, I don't know it's busy it's yeah. a cool scare zone. Looks nice. Yeah, it's a cool scare zone. It's like zone. a Halloween festival. 
Uh, what's the next one? Uh, the next one is I'm going to say my least favorite for multiple reasons. Uh, but this is the Conjure the Dark Scare Zone. Um, this is in the San Francisco area. So over by Diagon Alley and Lombard. It's like the, at the exit of uh, Fast and the Furious. Yeah, over by there. Um, and this scare zone is themed around witches. So one of those classic Halloween um, faces. Um, but the description for this one is on the first Hollow's Eve, an evil sorceress called forth monstrosities from dark dimensions. Now your blood will fuel them. Um, if this scare zone makes no sense to me. If you're just passing by, like just trying to get in and get out of that scare zone, you're not going to understand it. Like, I feel like you don't really understand what's going on. No, I mean, there's but, some little things that pop out that look like gremlins. It's okay. It's kind of cool. Like, there's a lot of good use of fog in that scare zone, I feel like. Um, and they have a stage set up with some witches. I haven't, we haven't watched it. I mean, I've seen a little bit. It's kind of just kind of like them yelling. I mean, right. yeah, but we haven't actually sat there to see what right, they're doing. Right, that's what I'm saying. If you don't just sit there and watch it, you're not going to understand it. Mm -hmm. It's like one of the smaller scare zones. But the problem with this scare zone, and it happens every single year, it's just in a very tight, small area. It bottlenecks. And again, because people want to be in these scare zones and stay in them and like watch what's happening on the stage, it just it clogs up. No one's moving. Right. But, but even this year, I just feel like it, it just didn't hit. You no. know, like before, like they had that one with the, um, it's like the really heavy metal. Is it like, it wasn't like Rob Zombie. Yeah. The Rob Zombie scare zone. Yeah. That one was really cool. I mean, it was cool, but again, it was just it's a lot of people for such a small spot. But I, yeah. I guess it is like a presentation type of spot. Cause, cause they had the, that one TV one too, right? What's it called? Mm -hmm. Crypt TV. Crypt TV. Did, yeah. Did you go to any of the events? I, I did. I just, <laughs> again, like I said, I cannot retain things. It does not stay in my brain. I don't know. It's interesting because they have... It's almost like in that scare zone every year, they put like a stage or they put like a photo op or something that you want to stop and enjoy. I just don't know why they don't put it in one of the bigger spots. No. Yeah, I agree. I don't know why they don't do that. But onto the next scare zone, we have Scarecrow, Cursed Soil. Uh, and that's in the New York Central Park area by the Crepe Stand. Also by the Dia de los Muertos bar booth. Lots of good food over there. Uh, lots of good food. Yeah, for sure. We have the. I mean, it's, it's pretty pricey. Food break. Uh, if you want some good eats, stack out, stack out, check out the Dia de los Muertos food booth. Uh, they had some good drinks. You got that. A fueling skull. Sorry. Burning, burning skull. skull. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. The, the, the fueling skull. <laughs> the burning skull. That was really cool. It had a whole ass uh, mangonada popsicle inside of there. It was really cool. Uh, a lot of drink. It was like too much drink, to be honest. It was a good deal. It, it was a good deal. I'm not going to lie. Then you had the cinnamon um chicharrones yeah the chicharrones um they were good i don't think it was worth five bucks for that tiny little bag all right we're saying that the food was good but i didn't say the price was good okay yeah and then tamale was also really good it was really big and fat a tamale well no actually it was small and fat and it was also tiny. all right this is getting inappropriate How? all right what is the okay. <laughs> scare zone about check out the food and then go into the scare zone right okay the scare zone <laughs> scarecrow curse soil it says at an abandoned farm, scarecrows have risen from the crust of the earth to hunt you, you and seek revenge. Oh my God, I can't talk. Uh, and they'll harvest your screams. That's the whole thing. They'll harvest your screams. Uh, it's uh, based off the HHN 27 house, Scarecrow the Reaping, which is featured at the Hollywood event this year. You know what? I did not. You didn't not. I did not. You didn't do this house. You didn't even go to Halloween Horror Nights I wasn't able to, no. But well, did I go? To the, I, I went to the twenty sixth. I think I worked the twenty sixth. I think you worked the twenty sixth, maybe, but you didn't go to twenty seven. And I remember that scarecrow, the reaping or scarecrow, whatever you want to call it, was one of my favorite houses. I don't know what it was about that house, but it was scary. There were like lots of very tall character actors, character actors, characters. Thank you. Um, <laughs> in that house, they were popping out of every which way they were doing like the above head scares. It was a really good one. And unfortunately Hollywood has it right now, right? Uh, yeah. So they have that one over at universal Hollywood, um, Hollywood. Yeah. Um, but yeah, oh, this scares on though. It's, it's pretty cool. Um, I wouldn't, some 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 of them are scary. They they got that pig. They have it's thing. corn, and they have it's corn. Yeah, it's a really good. I'm sure that they're crowded with TikTok people going around there. And 
Yeah, they are. We were one of them. <laughs> yeah. And that poor person's probably like, here we go again. But, but the honestly, corn. I don't stay around and record them. I'm literally just walking through. And if I see the corn, then I'll aim at the corn. And then I'm walking through too at the same time. Right. We don't, but people do. Right. And that's what I'm saying. Like, it's hard to move through these scare zones sometimes because, I don't know, people. Right. People. All right. Um, and that brings us to the last scare zone in the park. Um, this one is called Graveyard Deadly Unrest. And that is in the Hollywood area near Mel's Die In and the Bourne Stunt Show. Right. Um, all right. So on All Hallows Eve, a dark storm descends upon a cemetery and awakens long dead spirits. No one living can escape them. It's really big. It starts at where? It is really big. It starts almost where like the monster, the horror. It's like at the end of Hello Kitty horror makeup show, and uh, and and ends over there by the Hello Kitty store. Yeah, so it's a big spot. Um, it's it doesn't have um during the day it looks weird, but during at night it looks really cool. Yeah, like I feel like they could have used more set pieces. Like this is one that's really easy to move through. You don't have to worry about it being congested. Um, they make good use of the space, there's and there's a lot, a lot of, of fog. yeah, there's a lot of fog. There's a lot of characters. Their costumes are really cool. Um, there's that one that looks like a really tall ghost with the little arms. That uh, one's really cool. That one's my favorite, I think. Yeah, that one's neat. And then the the twins, the girls. The twins. You have the sculptures that kind of just stand there and then they pop out at you mm -hmm. too. The, the, that whole scare zone, I like it a lot. It's a good scare zone. Um, and if you guys go on our TikTok, you guys can see when some of the sounds <gasps> malfunctioned. Ooh, yeah. Uh, it's was, just really funny was good. walking through there. Yeah, we have a couple TikToks with that scare zone on it. So go check it out at the Half Day Adventures TikTok. Right, for sure. Um, and otherwise, in the park, too, if you like chainsaws or you're scared of them, they are there. Uh, they're the roaming hordes, as they call them each year. And this year, they're themed off of chainsaw trick-or-treaters. And I think the other one said chainsaw goths. Um, they're over in the Simpsons area. And then I think they're usually over by Transformers, too. Mm -hmm. so. Right. Uh, yeah. Now, right. um, we also have two shows, mm -hmm. like they usually do. Mm -hmm. At that one year, they had like three, right? They had three. They had that one really good one um, right there, actually, right there by Mel's Di Dying. Oh, yeah. And then they had another, sh the Bill and Ted's. Yeah, they've always had Bill and Ted's, but that stopped a couple of years back now. Mm -hmm. It used to be Academy of Villains. They got rid Academy of that. Academy of Villains, that's what it was. They That show that year, I don't remember what year it was, but it was such an amazing year uh, when they were in their in the Insane Asylum. Yeah, that one was good. That was like their first year. Oh, yeah. That, that was probably was, 26. Uh, I love that one. Because that, that was, was really the year cool. with Chance. Right, yep. Cool. Mm -hmm. um, but this year they have Halloween Nightmare Fuel Wildfire. Uh, so this is the second year that they've had that show. And that is the show that takes place over in the Fear Factor Amphitheater. Mm -hmm. Even though I don't even think Fear Factor is a thing anymore. Um, we haven't seen it yet. I was going to say, sorry to say, we actually have not watched that one this year. But I've heard it's almost identical to last year's if you've seen it. Mm -hmm. And people have just said that they've added more pyro this year. Right. But I do want to see it. I thought it was good. Yeah, I, I always think those are good. Yeah, they're neat to watch. Yeah. Um, and then the other one is the Lagoon Show. Uh, and this year it's called Ghoulish, A Halloween Tale. How'd you feel about it? Why did you write tale like that? Oh. <laughs> I wrote tail like a dog, a right? <laughs> I-L. Not like a... Um, I liked it. But again, this kind of goes back to us saying that this year is not all like heavy death metal and 80s synth, you know, rock music. Um, actually, I thought the show was kind of cool because it, again, was like that vintage retro Halloween feel. And it was like the beginning of it was almost themed after a record, like a book on record that people grew up with in the 60s. And it would tell you to like flip the, the record or whatever and follow along with the story. Right, right. No, yeah. Um, and then it turns into like, I don't know, I, I was reading about the show. I already forgot the description <laughs> of it. No, I, my favorite part either way was the, the weekend part. Yeah, yeah. Like the later half of the show turns into like the weekend. Spoilers but it's, if you haven't seen it. <laughs> oops. Um, but I really like it. I like all the lights and the music, the fountains. It's a good show. People were dancing. They were having fun. Mm -hmm. And um, if you watch, if you've listened to the first episode, you guys know I love lights. So, oh my god, stay there for Always hours. With the lights. <laughs> um, but it, it was a good one, so I recommend seeing that if you haven't. Um, yeah. yeah. All, all right. right. So now into the houses. Um, I think we we compose a list of all the houses that we have. Right. 
Um, yes, we've composed a list. We've done all the houses at this point. Um, some we've done quite a few times. Some we've only done once um, or twice. So like we said in the beginning, this is going to be our first review Right of the houses, our first ranking, I should say. Uh, yeah, and again, like this is our just our opinions. Mm -hmm. Go, go, go into the houses and and experience them for experience yourself. Experience them yourself. Experience them a few times. Um, and again, I know that we are already a month into the event. We have one month left. So if you haven't already looked at videos, listened to podcasts, or done the houses yourselves, there might be some spoilers in here. If you want to skip to the end, or if you want to listen, keep on doing so. Right. Also, if um, you guys don't agree with what we say email us or messages on Instagram. Yeah. And, we're and responsive. We want to know. Yeah. Let's have a little convo for sure. Okay. So here we go. All right. We're starting from worst and we're going to end with the best in our opinions. Um, and we've grouped them into like little sections. Yeah. Around. Little sections. Cause we were talking about this and I think it's kind of hard to decide like what is like the top worst house. Um, because I'm looking at the list now and I'm like, do I think that? I don't know. All right. Well, what's number 10? All right. Number 10 is Hellblock Horror. And why? Uh, to be honest, I'll tell you for, for right away. It just feels like <laughs> well, not a lot. Okay. I feel like from the very beginning, things that people have already been saying is this is the worst house. Like, I don't feel like anyone really gave it a chance. But I did. And after getting out, I was like, yeah, okay. It's, it's pretty in line. Um but the house to me kind of seems like it was just created last minute. That's what people think too. Um, and that it was very, I don't know, loose ends were not tied together. What is the story? Also, it's in a sound stage. It's over by like the minion section, which is usually where the IPs or the intellectual properties have their houses uh, because they're usually big. They make use of the sound stages. So I think people thought, and the rumor is that this was going to be one of the IPs that we did not get for the event this year uh, being based off of the Evil Dead. Mm -hmm. um, there was also speculation that people thought that this was going to be a Stranger Things house. And that's what I was hoping for. I mean, I don't know. I, mean, I would have been cool. I would have liked it. But people were like, oh, they didn't get the rights to it or they had to pull the plug. Um, and allegedly they finished this house only a few days before the event started. So... I don't know. Um, but if you want to go ahead and read the description of this house so people know what the heck we're even talking about. So I know what we're even talking about. Sure. Uh, Hellblock Horror. It says, as these monsters escape their prison, there's no escape for you. Um, enter a prison whose savage inmates are monstrous creatures. If they break free from their cells, it's a death sentence for everyone. Ooh. So where is this monster, monster house even from? Okay. Actually, it says right here. The house would take place in a secret prison, which holds a multitude of supernatural creatures, including aliens zombies and vampires that want to destroy the world the interdimensional power core that powers the prison failed and caused the monsters to break out of their cells and escape guests are sent in to try and destroy the prison before it destroys the world See, by detonating the power core like this, if i hadn't read this i wouldn't know that's the story of that house mm -mm. You, you know what it's giving me too it's giving me um uh guardians of the galaxy mission breakout mission breakout yeah that's exactly what it's giving me yeah I feel like when I walked through, you it looked like the same scene throughout the whole house mm -hmm. with just like random monsters. Mm -hmm. Some security guards. And some security guards. Right. And it seemed like, I think I remember it being a long house. We only did this one once. And this one is always the house that has the shortest wait. It really is. Yeah, I was say like 10, 20 minutes every single time. And they have a huge queue. So for sure they had mm -hmm. to have something planned. That's what everybody's saying. But. And I wouldn't be surprised, but it's, it's just weird. It's like a weird setup. Um, but like, I'm thinking about it. And I do want to try it a couple more times. Maybe it's, I, I wanted, know we said I wanted it's, to try it the other time. Yeah. But I know we say it's the worst, but I don't know if it's really the worst. Well, what do you think? Who do you think is the worst? I don't know. We'll get there. But I also think that's interesting too, because I thought all of these were just like random monsters that were in there. They look like pretty, again, like I went to spirit Halloween and just grabbed some masks because oh, I had shit. to finish this house. <laughs> Damn. But I was reading it and it says that there's actually like a tooth fairy in there. Oh, from the past, past mm -hmm. house? And like a swamp yeti. Oh, you know what? I think I did see that tooth fairy. Well, that's what I'm saying. Now I think that what they did too is they put some of the monsters from years prior houses in there. Oh, okay. That's kind of cool. So I do think that's kind of neat. So now I want to go through again and see if that's actually the case. Yeah, for sure. We'll, um, we'll, we'll keep up to you guys on the second. <laughs> yeah, we'll see if our be. opinion <laughs> changes. But as of right now, I we're saying it's the worst house. Right. Um, can I... <sighs> Okay, what are you stuck on right now? All right, so now we have number nine. 
And I feel like what I have is number nine. I need to switch it. I actually want to say that the ninth worst house. Ninth worst house? Ninth best house. No, not. No, you're all mixed up. All right. Second to last. Sucks. Oh, God. I'm going to say it's Spirits of the Coven. Okay, why? I don't like that house. And that's one that everybody was so excited about um, because they're like, ooh, like 1920s flappers, speak easy. Mm -hmm. So fun. So cool. Which like, fine. Maybe that is a neat little theme. But I feel like you see that theme in the house for like a minute and then it's done. And again, that was another house that like going through the house. I'm like, what is happening? Why is this house so long? It's the same scene over and over again. Um but I think it took me... Have we been in there twice now? Twice, yeah. It wasn't until the second time that I actually figured out like what was going on, kind I, of. I couldn't even tell you what was going on. I, I listened to the, like like I said, the Orlando podcast, the Universe Orlando podcast, and I I guess they, they told a story about it. But do you have the description there? Even the story, I was like, what are they saying? Um, yeah, I do have the description. Let me go ahead and read it. Mm-hmm. They're bewitchingly terrifying. A coven of beautiful flapper witches will lure you into their 1920s speakeasy, reveal their haggish true form, and turn your scream squad into a witch's brew. They'll be cackling, and you'll be screaming. Um, so that's basically it. Um, but uh, the the whole, I mean, essentially what it is, is they're luring you into the speakeasy. Right. And once the witch gets you, I guess they're like pulling you deeper and deeper, or you're going deeper and deeper into the secret speakeasy. Uh, but and but eventually the story, you're... right, that they said, it, it's kind of like they're, they're using you for your passion is what. Passion for what? I don't, that's what they were talking about on the, on the podcast. No, it, there was a one guy that who like loved to assassinate or whatever. Jeez. Or something like that. I don't even. I to be honest, the the house is confusing. It's confusing. There's a lot of. I mean, I don't even think that the costumes are that great. They all just have like the witch mask. But for me, what I realized is you were going like deeper and deeper into the speakeasy. Like you went down and you know, quote unquote, elevator, and you're going down into the sewers, essentially, right? Uh, yeah. And then there's like something with like um, I remember there being like a mine cart. <laughs> I don't know. It was weird. And it's a long house. I feel like it just doesn't end. No, you're right. No, I, I, now that I'm thinking about it, I do agree with you. I, I, the story really kind of breaks down. Like, you you really don't know wh- but, where it's going. But how does it end? Then, like, all of a sudden, you're in this room, like, the deepest, darkest pit of witches. And there's, like, the runes and... Yeah, I don't know. Something like that. There's runes there and it's oh glowing. Goodness. But again... <laughs> The story doesn't make any sense. If you listen to the podcast story that they say doesn't make sense to what they're saying. They're literally saying the house would take place in a forbidden speakeasy that is disguised as a meat processing factory. I don't think they said any of that in the in the podcast. So now I'm worried about my credibility talking about this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously they've created a story, but again, like it's so in depth that even still, I don't know if you would ever pick that up when going through the house. Mm, no. But also aside from the fact and We'll talk about it again, I guess, with some of these other houses. Um, but people are like, this house is so beautiful. I don't think it's beautiful. Also, no, I don't know how people sit in these houses and actually, you know, have the time to say that they're beautiful. What do you mean? Sit in these houses? Like, you're getting... I can't even talk. You're getting pushed through these houses so quickly. Mm, I don't know. How do you have that much time to be like, wow, the scenery, it's just gorgeous. That's how I feel about the Bugs house. Hmm. I don't even... <laughs> I don't know. Oh my god. Okay. Well, yeah. Spirits of the Coven, bottom of the barrel with Number nine. Hellblock Horror. Yeah, it's not. Uh, it's not our favorite. But you know, we'll go back around again, and I'll listen to the podcast it, story again. I'll read the story again. It could next be number time, ten at the end. Yeah. Next time we'll talk about it again and see what what it says. All right. Give us number eight. So this is going to be the last of the the worst. I guess. Yeah. Uh, Fiesta de Chupacabra is Ooh, fancy fiesta de chupacabra fiesta salsa quinceanera <laughs> okay no um i i wanted to i think a lot of people wanted to like this house too but i i, I really couldn't because their their costumes i did not like all right well i was reading a little bit about this one and i think i asked you one day like again what is this house about because sometimes you just go through them and even if they're cool you're like but what is it about what's what's the point of the story um but this was one that i was also excited about like you said i think a lot of people were i think it was kind of just like a cool concept Mm -hmm. um but the description for this one (laughs) listen to your abuela 
and beware the chupacabras. Visit a Latin American village where the legend of the creature chupacabra is celebrated with a colorful fiesta and the streets are lined with the crimson blood of tourists like you and your amigos. The mountains of Latin America are filled with many wonderful traditions and in one tiny village they pay tribute where is it? To the legendary creature Chupacabras with an annual fiesta. Ah, yes. In Fiesta de Chupacabras, there's more to the legend than meets the eye. And in this colorful village, the streets are lined with the crimson blood of visitors. You use crimson a lot. Crimson blood. Uh, so basically, like you were telling me, it's pretty in line. I think it's like a cult. Not really, but like... No, yeah. They're, like trying, to, they're trying to sacrifice you to the Chupacabra. And mm, it's a neat house walking through... Like you feel like you're in a a Latin American town, mm-hmm. little city, uh, but Going I think the, the market. yeah, but I think the issue we had is one, all of the characters are basically wearing the same thing, and it's a humongous spoilers, humongous mask. That I mean, uh, it's not scary to me. What do you mean spoilers? I mean, we're already happy. Oh, through the, the thing. mask I mean, like, is a spoiler. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, they're wearing masks, which are supposed to be a chupacabra mask. Is it supposed to be? I, I can't tell. Like, I it think just so. looks That's like a giant. Is. You know, like when you look at um, if I if I'm gonna say I don't know, I like don't know. the Hawaiian, like coconut mask looking things. <laughs> I think it's supposed to be that they make masks, mm-hmm. and then the masks are supposed to be like chupacabra ones to, um, like to disguise them, not to disguise them, but to be like. I don't know. Okay, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We're getting off track here. The, the the mask did not scare me. The only there was one good part that I liked, and it was when the chupacabra was right there in my face. It was a very detailed chupacabra, and I wasn't paying attention, and it got me in the corner. But even the, the chupacabra wasn't that scary. I thought he was going to be scarier. Okay. It well, looked like a little cat or a coyote. Well, either way, that's why it's at the bottom of the barrel because, it, as much as we wanted it to be really good, it it, did, it wasn't good. Yeah. The scenery, I think, was the best part. For sure, yeah. I'm not saying the characters did a bad job. I think they just all looked too similar, and like they weren't scary even looking. And I don't blame any of the characters. Well, I don't blame anyone, really. I mean, everyone, I guess, all the designers and everyone, they, they have high hopes for the houses, and uh, yeah. uh, they hoped, I guess, it was... But it didn't come out that way, unfortunately. It wasn't giving right. horror. Right, exactly. Um, also, for a house to be called Fiesta de Chupacabras, I don't even think it was heavy on the actual Chupacabra itself. You think it was more of the... I feel like it was more of the people the and the villagers. Masks. Right. Mm. Well. Mm. All right. That's that. Um, and these, the next group that we have is the next four houses. They're kind of just neutral. Uh, I don't hate them. I don't love them. I kind of love the bugs. I'm not going to lie to you. They're mid. They're mid. Yeah, for sure. Um, starting up with seven. Go ahead. Descendants of Destruction. Okay. What's that about? I don't know. We only did that one once. Um... Like I said, we've been to the event quite a few times. Lines have been very long. They've been super um, long? Oh, wh- why is everyone here right now? I, y'all, what are you doing here? Yeah, what are y'all doing? <laughs> what are y'all doing? Um, they're long. And this house, again, because it's so mid on the list, I haven't been like, let's do this one again and again. But it is one that I want to do again. So we'll make time for it. For sure. Um, but this is a house that is set in the same um, like universe or timeline, I think. I don't know if it's before or after. Um, another house that they had, I don't remember what year it was. Maybe it was like 29 mm-hmm. or 28. Uh, Seeds of Destruction. I like Seeds of Destruction too. Yeah. It's, I think it was like set around like an ap- apocalyptic. Mm-hmm. And that house used to be at uh, the weekend's house that where it's at now. Yeah. Like in the old parade building. Mm-hmm. Um but essentially, humans are wiped off the face of the earth and the plants took over. It was a neat house. Um, so this one, Descendants of Destruction, this one, humans were still alive post-apocalypse. Well, you, want, you want me to read the description? Sure. Okay, it says right here. I see I'm being shut down. After a meteor crashed into the earth, wiping out most of humanity, the remaining survivors in New York City hid underground in the subways in order to escape from the hostile post-apocalyptic conditions. Centuries oh, later... They became lost in the darkness of the underground and evolved into bloodthirsty mutant creatures. Now I don't think that has anything to do with the plants, the seeds. No, but the seeds are like, I think it's after this. Mm. It's either before or after this. You know what? That was the story. It wasn't even the description. Deeper, darker, deadlier. Careful not to leave any of your scream squad behind as you descend the subway tunnels of a deserted New York. 
Lurking in the dark are hungry mutants looking to feast on the last remnants of humanity. I guess. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I guess people like climbed into the subway, into the sewer, and the deeper they got, the more they evolved. It was cool. They had some nice scares in there. It wasn't crazy. Yeah, it was cool. Yeah, it's kind of like you're in, like I said, you're in the subway system, and then you're. I think you're going deeper into the pipes. And a, lot of, a lot of flashes, stro- strobing lights. Yeah, lots of strobe lights, lots of um, UV light. Mm-hmm. There were some good scares. I liked it. I, I don't like. I said I don't hate it. I don't love it, but it's good. It's a good house. It's one we definitely have to do again. Mm-hmm. I think to. To realize why we put it mid. Right. Because it wasn't the worst. It was cool. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. So next one. Number six. Bugs. Bugs eaten alive. Right. Uh, right off the bat, I feel like during team member previews, first night, people said that people were not making it through this house, that it was very disgusting, very scary. And I was nervous because I will say that if there is one thing that I'm afraid of, it would be bugs. Cockroaches specifically. I don't know. I think it was all over exaggerated. People were like describing it as like giant nasty bugs and holes in the face and the, all of that. The holes in the face. Trigger warning if you don't like that. Yeah. Like what's it called? I don't know. My sister has that for sure. She like holes like that. I no, know. a lot of people can't handle that. And I understand that the bugs. Okay. Come on now. I don't know. I was nervous. So we did that one actually the first night of the event. Um, we waited a very long time for that house. And the queue is really weird, too. Yeah, this is the first time that they've put a queue um, over by Men in Black. There's typically a house there. Mm-hmm. But this year, they didn't put a house there. The queue goes all the way through there, and the house is back where... Um, the Sentence of Destruction is, right? Yeah, usually where they put like the tent houses. If you're familiar with the event, there's two tents back there that have houses. So it's a weird setup. It's a lot of just empty staring at nothing in line forever so it makes it feel like it takes forever right yeah (laughs) um but do you want to read the description for that house sure i I do think it's a cool concept these bugs are out to exterminate you while touring a 1950s home of of the future you'll be surrounded by the slime of bugs everywhere as hordes of many-legged terrors descend upon you and your scream squad they're heavy on the Scream Squad, huh? That's the the theme, the Scream Squad. Okay. Um, and it says, you'll be dropping like flies. Ooh, fun. Uh, while touring a 1950s home of the future, guests will be swarmed by hordes of revolting insects after a pest control system failure unleashes them. Many legged horrors growing, mutating, and laying eggs in human host will warm their way into the deepest of fears. Those who dare enter will be dropping like flies and bugs eating alive. Ew. That's a cool description. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, like it was the, neat. It's like a, it gives you a little creepy eggs in your body. Yeah, gross. But that's why people thought it was gross because, again, in the house, there's lots of characters that have like holes in their faces mm-hmm. and their body where like the bugs laid eggs and things like that. Yeah, but you also heard rumors. Oh, there's bu- actual bugs in the house. They, they let thousands of bugs in the house. <laughs> that was probably my right, rumor I started. Up. But okay. they could have done it. They've done houses. Actually, they said in the description on that page that this is the first house that um, Universal has done based off of bugs. And the last house that they had, like a, a heavier bug theme, I mm-hmm. think was back in 2002 or something. But they had actual bugs in there? Yeah, it was like a Fear Factor house. Oh, really? I didn't know that. That's cool. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Well, anyways, um, I like that house a lot just because <laughs> they just look so funny to me. Well, that's the thing. Like, I was ready for like disgusting, nasty bugs. And then I think, I feel like every year there's always like one house that is like Universal's, like, joke house Mm -hmm. and i think this is that house what was last year's you think or the year whatever Uh, shoot i don't even remember Mm. okay well anyways yeah i I think this was jokey for sure yeah it like you said it's like 1950s like attack of the giant bug like Mm -hmm. b roll campy um they kind of just look funny but the theme was cool too like you said it's based off of like the perfect extermination process and something goes wrong all mm-hmm. hell breaks loose and now the bugs are triple quadruple the size yeah i think it's a cool concept and it, I, again i like this house a lot i didn't make my top three but i like it yeah it was neat to be honest i didn't even make my top five that's funny <laughs> but it is six but, but we'll it's, see it's good it's good that's what i'm saying this is just kind of like mid because i don't hate it and i don't love it yeah i got through it I, I was also really worried that it was going to like smell disgusting in there because if you've done Halloween Horror Nights, you know that they really play in on the smells. Oh, there's a bug flying around. Shut up, where? 
Where is there a bug? It just flew past the TV. How hmm. fitting. Um, but they really play into the smells to make like things even more disgusting. Like the exorcist house the one year. That's the worst smell in the world. Where obviously in the exorcist, there's the green vomit scene and Ugh, the house smelled like vomit. Smell. So I thought that this house was going to smell like earthworms or something disgusting. Yeah, yeah. But, but the smell in the house is actually supposed to be pine. Is it? Because mm-hmm. mm. that's like what the, the extermination scent is supposed to be. Oh, cool. In the story. So uh, it was, yeah. Really good house. Yeah. Uh, next one. Number uh, five. We're number in the top five. five. Right so this lands right in the middle of our list. This is Dead Man's Pier, Winter's Wake. A lot of people really like this house. This is one of those houses that everyone says is beautiful. It is a really beautiful house. I, I agree. It's... It is cool. We've gone through this one two or three times yeah. now. Mm-hmm. Um, and I would agree. It is, it's a really neat house to go through. You're going through um, an old fisherman's town. The description says, you're dead in the water. Um, in a New England fishing village, undead fishermen emerge from the waves to seek their revenge. And you scream, and your scream squad, there it is again, uh, may have escaped their hooks in the scare zone. Uh, now they'll reel you in and drag you under. And speaking of a scare zone, this was a scare zone at one point. I forget which year it was. Um, oh, 2016. It says right there called <laughs> Dead Man's Wharf. Um, it was also over where the witch one is this year. Right. But it was a really cool one. The costumes were really neat. I remember specifically from that year, the, um, like the diver with like the yep. old diving helmet and they use the UV. The UV light inside of the Yeah, helmet. it's really neat. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm glad they made this one into a house. And again, when you were listening to the podcast the other day, there is... A whole story. This was actually the house that that lady was saying. Oh, did you did you hear the podcast? It tells the story of the girl with the violin. Oh yeah, yeah, it was that one. And and again, you will not understand that. I mean, you you will understand the house if you go through it. But like they they go in I didn't. such great detail in the podcast. Like they have a whole story of this girl who was on this pier by herself with this guy, and she's playing the violin. And so she's like playing it beautifully, and and the guy's like, oh, it didn't reach the angels; it reached someone else. And it's like. These mm. demon fishermen coming through and killing everybody. And she wakes up in a coma or something like that. Didn't know that. It's it's a cool. Like, like I said, I recommend you guys go check that out. Universal Orlando podcast, Discover podcast. Yeah, it is cool. They make a really good use of the space in that house. There's some really large set pieces. A huge boat. Two um, huge boats, really. And Winter's Wake, it's cold in there. Like, you feel like you're walking... It's like the, the, this town that the one winter. house. What's it called? The abominable snowman one? I think it was called the Yeti house. The Yeti house or whatever. <laughs> but I love co- houses like that where it's nice and cold. Also, the Frankenstein one right, was like rainy or Dracula one was rainy and oh, cold. Yeah, yeah, it had the water. Mm-hmm. Those are uh, When they have stuff like that, I think it's really cool. It's just very immersive. And I think it's very cool too that this house started out as a scare zone and they had such a big story, I'm sure, planned for it. It was so popular. So they gave it the opportunity to become one of the houses um, to really elaborate deeper into that story. So Mm -hmm. I think that's neat when Universal does that. So that was number five. Uh, Number four. What is number four? Halloween. And you say that like you're disappointed. uh, I like Halloween. Uh, Like, no, to be honest, I'm not disappointed. Halloween, it's it's not on my top three because I like the. Actually, I would switch it maybe with the number three spot, but we'll get there. Oh. But I'm I'm like in, I'm I'm to- torn really between those two houses. Halloween is just really classic. It's really good. It has really nice scares. You have the music going on in the background, Do-do-do. like when they're like popping yeah, out with the knife. Uh, I, I agree. Like they've done this house numerous times, even in our years of going to Halloween Horror mm-hmm. Nights, and I can't imagine how many years before. Um, they've also done different iterations of it, like Halloween Two, and I think they did Halloween Four. Mm-hmm. Um, but this, this house is, is just so good. It was really good, and I remember it being. You know what? Now that I think about it, have we done a Halloween house? Like actual Halloween? Because I want to say the first, was the first year that we did it together? Was it Halloween? Um, I'm, I don't remember. Or was it oh, Halloween Oh, no, no. Too? It was just Halloween. Oh, no. I'm thinking no. about something else. I don't remember, but I think I've done a Halloween house. And even still, I think this one has been different than the first version of it. Why? I don't know. That's what I'm trying to think of. Again, I'm getting off topic, but I feel like the first year that we did Halloween Horror Nights together, which was like 26, there was a ho- there was a Halloween house, and I don't know if it was Halloween or if it was Halloween 2. But even still, they were not the same houses if they were both Halloween. They've done different things. They've done similar scares, I think, in both. Obviously, both have Michael Myers, mm-hmm. but they're never an exact carbon copy. Well, no, because they have different sets. They have different locations of where they're at. Mm-hmm. Like that one was in like you, you go past a dumpster. He's in the dumpster. Yeah, you would. It's like a doctor's office or something like that. He's mm-hmm. like popping up all over the place. Yeah, no, it was really good. There's always. I mean, Michael Myers is always a good scare. Mm-hmm. Do you want a description for this one too? 
Uh, sure. Sure says, gather your friends or your... <gasps> Scare squad it, or it scream squad. That, it doesn't say here, but <laughs> but that's what they're saying, right? Gather your friends and visit Hayden, Haydenfield, Illinois, where Michael Myers is about to don his mask and embark on his first brutal spree. Silent, merciless, relentless. He's the embodiment of pure evil. You don't want to go alone as you go back to where it all began. This year, step into original 1978 horror, horror classic Halloween. Oh my God, struggling with words. <laughs> Sorry. Horror Halloween. Horror Halloween. Um, but yeah, that's a, I, I love the house. It's, it's a really good one. It didn't make my top three. It could have, to be honest. I could I could switch three and four. I don't know if I would. Really? Maybe. But it was good. I think a lot of people were like, oh, Halloween again. But I think what you have to realize is that. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Okay. That's one thing you could realize. But the other thing is maybe people don't go to Halloween Horror Nights every single year. So just because you didn't go. And, right. No. Yeah. For sure. You know, people come down, to, I'm sure, to enjoy it too. Like yeah. we said, it's a premier Halloween event. Mm -hmm. So you can never go wrong. And I think that's just obviously one of the intellectual properties or IPs that Universal owns or has mm -hmm. rights to. Mm -hmm. um, but you were talking about, I know this again, off tangent, but you were talking about Chex Texas, Texas, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. That was one of the houses that I thought was really good the first year that we went together. Mm -hmm. And then they did Texas Chainsaw last year, mm -hmm. but they were like, again, two very different houses with different scares. Yeah. But I feel like that one's a little more similar. I don't know. I feel like Halloween, they have a lot more like freedom because he can go anywhere he wants. But I, I feel guess. like Texas Chainsaw Massacre, like, he's kind of just hanging around his house. You know what I mean? Yeah, but they were different. That's what I'm saying. Sure. Like, I didn't go through the house and I was like, I already did this one. Right. No, for sure. I like, mean, they're I both different. Mindset, for same, sure. same thing. But... Same thing, but different. All right. So now we're moving into the top three. Um, and now that I look at it, actually, I feel like we listened to another podcast and somebody had something very similar. And it was surprising that their top three and really our top four are all the IPs or intellectual properties of the year. They're just really good. I don't know. I mean, it's they were really good. When you're working with originals, I feel like you 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 start something and you're like, oh, did I go off like somewhere? Else? Like, did you yeah. follow that guideline? I mean, but some of off? the some people really love the original houses, and some of them are really good. I mean, I think the one that you worked at. So Christian was a team member one year. Right. What was, was that house called? Oh, uh, I can't even tell you right now. Oh my God. I can't Wait, even was... tell you right now. Hold on. I have, it's in the back of my head. I know what it is. We'll see if you, uh, no, I can't. Okay. Tomb of the Ancients. Oh my God. Tomb of the Ancients. Yeah. That was a very good house. No, not, not even going to lie. That was literally my favorite house. Uh, but you, you couldn't even remember okay, the name again, of it. Again, like I said, I'm, I don't know how many something. Uh, if you guys know anything about me, again, I cannot retain a single thing. It will That's not stay in my brain. Um, but no, that, that house was the best house. Um, sorry. Best original house that I, what am I saying? The, <laughs> the best original house, in my opinion. There we go. Yeah, it was really good. I think it's because like it felt very like tight space. Mm -hmm. Lots of scares. Scares were good. It was a cool theme mm -hmm. about like ancient Egypt. Yep. It was really neat. Um, where were we going with that? Oh, people really like the original. Right. Yeah, houses. for sure. No, that this for sure is my, probably my favorite house out of all the years I've gone. Yeah. Um, but all right, coming anyways, back yeah. to what we we're trying to do, uh, the number three house is The Weekend After Hours Nightmare. Um, this is like the big main headliner, I feel like, of the event this year For that sure, one yeah. was hyped up. Um, they also have this house over in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there's differences, but again, pretty much the same house. Oh. Um, and the big thing everybody was like, what is The Weekend? And we're talking about like The Weekend, the the performer, right, the music the, artist. Mm -hmm. Um what does he have to do with Halloween? I still don't really know, honestly. I mean, people, people who love the weekend know about their the After Hours album that came out and how like he had like um plastic surgery. It was kind of like his story with plastic surgery. I guess like in a video they cut his head off. I love the weekend, but I don't I don't watch music videos like that. I don't know the lore of right. the weekend, but I'm gonna throw my brother under the bus. He bought Brian. A, Brian bought a ticket uh, for the whole month. <laughs> <laughs> right and he went I hope one he's day to this. one day he went one, one day one night he went to the event <laughs> he went inside the weekend house and that was the only house he did he <laughs> went to the entire event bought a hundred and something dollar ticket to go in one house to go into one, one time house. a single time on That's opening night hilarious. yeah but 
I mean, like I said, if you love the weekend, you love the weekend, right? <laughs> I hope you love the weekend. <laughs> For sure. But okay, so wh- how do you feel about the house? What was in the house? <sighs> Let me read the little description. Sure. Um, the house was cool. Let's actually just start with the queue. Um, they played three songs on the queue and, uh, on opening night. On opening night, they, but I remember we were in line for over two hours for it, right. listening to the same three songs. The and what were they? Because we was. were joking that we didn't even remember what they were. Uh, save your tears. Save your tears. Say. Yeah. Um, then you had. Um, I can't even remember the names right now. <laughs> but yeah, we're like, oh my gosh, they're playing the same three the songs. The same three songs. They're so annoying. Um, but yeah, no. Uh, the and the queue too. Blinding lights. Blinding Lights. And what was the other one? I'm, I'm looking it up right now. Blinding Lights. So um, Save Your Tears. It wasn't Starboy. No. Was it in After Hours? No. What was it? It's the one with... Uh, yeah, it had to have been in After Hours. Blinding Lights. Uh, Save Your Tears. It wasn't In Your Eyes, right? No, it was. It I was think. In Your Eyes? In Your... No, I don't know. I'm not going to play it because that's copyright. I don't know. Um, all right. Description. Enter the macabre mind of the weekend in this haunted house as he stalks you through the surreal nightmare of his after hours music. Prepare to enter the macabre mind of the weekend in this haunted house as he stalks. Okay. It says it twice. Um, a slasher carving a smile at an otherworldly rave bandage maniacs performing extreme plastic surgery and a grotesque mannequin masquerade. His nightmare is now yours. So basically I think the house is pretty much like you walk into it. I don't want to spoil too much, but Still, you walk into the house and they're extracting all of his nightmares, and then you're walking through his nightmares mm-hmm. while listening to the weekend house and, or music. And why is this the number three house though? Why would you put this over Halloween? Um, I'll tell you right now. The lights. That's oh my why. god, the blinding lights. <laughs> the blinding lights. <laughs> no, it's really cool. It's a cool house. Uh, do I want to spoil? I don't know because now I feel bad if people go through. You're right. Never mind. But I'm like, not this spoil. is out there too. It I, is on YouTube. I don't know. Okay. Well, okay. Listen, if you're gonna you're gonna watch it on YouTube, if if you're really you're not gonna listen to my podcast before you, we warned you. You can skip to the end. You're right, exactly. Um, the weekend house is like a maze, right? All right. There's one part that's like a maze. And that's the best part too. But you walk through. It's like the Super Bowl. It is like the Super Bowl. Exactly like the Super Bowl. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Um, the Super Bowl performance. Except for the beginning part, you, you're in this like this little kind of like a club mm-hmm. masquerade thing. You go through. Um, you have that maze, a mirror maze, crazy lights going through everywhere. Yeah. You have... Um, I mean, that's what it says. It's like a rave. Things going off from the ceiling. You have things that are like camouflaged with the wall coming at you. Yeah. You have um, slashers. At the end, you get this big jump scare on the screen. It was cool. It's like a lot of those scares that like you don't expect. Right. Like you said, like blending into the wall or coming from above you or you're in the room and there's like a bunch of mannequins. Which one is real? Even though you know that one is real. And that one we've done it like twice. I think we've only done it twice. But the second time I had, I think that was one of the times that we've gotten like really good scares. And that's what I was about to say right now. You can go on it once. You're not going to get all the scares. You're not going to see everything. If you go on it again, you'll get different ones. Every time you go, you're going to get a different scare. Every time you go, you're going to get a different experience. And that one was really cool the second time because you, yeah. you literally saw everything. But also we had a lot of space in between the people in front mm-hmm. of us and the people behind us. We were literally just, it was kind of like we were just walking in the house, me and you. Yeah. Um, Which but makes it, it cool. kind of scarier too. But yeah. that that's the worst. And maybe that's why some of these are ranked so poorly is because we've gone through houses so many times where like the people in front of us are getting all the scares and then we walk by and we get nothing. Mm-hmm. And then that repeatedly happens. And then we get out of the house and we're like, Meh. we waited an hour for to that. see nothing. Right. So uh, that's like the one toss up there with Halloween. Yeah. But no, I, I enjoy the house it, mainly just because of the vibe. Yeah. The songs are cool. Yeah, whatever. All right. Number two. Number two. And, and again, these are just so hard. <sighs> these were Be- hard. Between two and one. They're just so good. A lot of these houses are really good, you know, but I had to put Universal Monsters Legends Collide as the second best See, house. See, and I could have potentially put that one as my first, I- but... I mean, I will say the one that you did put first, I would agree with you on that too. But if I hadn't have gone through that house and we waited, that was the last house that we needed to do. Mm -hmm. Um, I would have said Universal Monsters, Legends Clyde was my favorite. The first time we did Universal Monsters, right? That one's over there by the Curious George, the kids playground area Mm -hmm. um, right next to the weekend. But the first time we went through it, we got some really good scares. Um, Yeah. What do you mean? Yeah. Why are you saying like that? You didn't get good I mean, scares? No, we got good scares. I, I could have gotten more. Yeah, for sure. I mean, again, like we just talked about it. People <laughs> get it in front of us. People don't. But we got, we got a decent run. It was yeah. good. 
and it was good. The theming is really good. Um, at the end, can I? Yeah, read go the description. Ahead. Yeah. Um, if you thought one universal monster was scary, how about three? Um, so in this house, I'll just say the three universal monsters that are featured are the Wolfman, um, Dracula, and the Mummy. Mm -hmm. um, better summon your. Scream, Scream squad, squad, yeah. Because <laughs> you're about to get caught in the middle of an epic battle between these three monsters. Together, for the first time ever, their mission to find the amulet that will break their curse and they'll destroy anyone that gets in their way. Again, a story that I probably would not have known specifically mm -hmm. for this house. I, I, I don't think people... Okay, majority of the people, right? Unless you're a hardcore Universal Disney Halloween Horror Nights goer, you know? I don't, you're not going for the lore. You're going for the drinks. You're going for the scares. Which I think is so funny. I guess, like, I don't think about it because I do enjoy these things. Mm -hmm. Like, genuinely, I think it's really interesting how these stories and parks and all that are created. I could go on and on. Another podcast, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, but I even just with movies, like, they don't have to be, like, Disney movies or anything like that. I just like to read about them. I like to know because and, there's so much that's always not explained. What's I'm saying? Before, I guess I was with you, I don't really... I, 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 don't, I don't pay attention to the things. I go through... The, like it I shows, said, and you don't remember them either. Okay. <laughs> and that's my whole thing, but I'm learning, and, and I, I enjoy f learning about these houses, learning about the story behind everything that they're doing. Yeah. It's cool. Like whoever comes up with these, brilliant. You guys are amazing. I would love that job. Are you creative enough? I think I am. There you go. Hire her. She needs a job. Please. Um, but yeah, so going through, I think I might have known about this before going into the house. But again, it's based around these three monsters and heavily on the mummy, which a lot of people said this is the first time like that the mummy was really like a focus in a Halloween Horror Nights house. You know, that could be a lie, but maybe specifically like. I don't know. I don't know. I think the mummy was a house actually. Before. I think it was a house too. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe that's a lie, but he's the whole house again is centralized around the mummy and in Egypt. It's in Egypt. That's the main thing right there. That's and you're in like Egypt. in the tomb and they're seeking out this amulet. I don't mm -hmm. know why. I mean, I could read it, I guess, but these three monsters, um, it says come together as universal transports guests to the 19th century with the trio of monsters seeking one thing, the amulet of Ra. The Wolfman believes this ancient relic contains the power to finally lift his dreaded curse, while Dracula and the Mummy have nefarious plans to use it to bring humankind to its knees. With the full moon on the rise and a race against time, guests find themselves entangled in a bloodthirsty battle between terrifying titans and only one will survive. And there's a full backstory to it. I'm not going to read it. But um, basically, all three of these monsters are trying to get the amulet and they're in a fight to do so and by the end of the house there is one that is a winner and i would not have known that if i didn't read this because i probably wouldn't have gone through the house enough time to realize that the ending character that wins changes mm -hmm. each also, time i mean the team members try to tell you oh every time you go when? and the, i heard it i overheard it really hmm. by a team member but like again if you don't get someone that's helpful or you know if you're only going once you're not going to know that. That's true. I mean, there are some people and my you friends that passes. are, well, yeah, you're only going to go once. And unless, you know, you have the opportunity to go through multiple times, if there's short lines then yeah, you would not mm -hmm. know. You wouldn't know that. Yeah. So, um, but there were a lot of scares in this one. Like I feel like they had a the lot of characters, we a lot of, uh, boo holes as they mm -hmm. call them, just things always jumping out. Um, when you go to a how many horn, or, sorry, when you go through a, a haunted house, right? What scares you the most? I don't know, because I feel like I'm somebody that's not really scared of Halloween houses. So nothing scares you? Haunted just house. just pops ups? Just pop ups? I mean, a jump scare, I guess, is scary if you don't realize it. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's just a startle. But like, that's why I said the bug's house was like maybe going to be something that was like more of like a scare tactic to me because like gross. Or like I say, like I'm afraid of aliens because like they could be real. To be precise, nope. you're scared of E.T. I'm scared of E.T. If that was a haunted house, <laughs> if you just let me walk through the E.T. adventure queue by myself and you have like a small person dressed as E.T. <laughs> waddling around, I would be scared shitless, period. <laughs> that would be the scariest house that you could possibly put me That's in. Hilarious. Laugh all you want. But like, I'm not scared of like witches. No. I don't know. You know what I'm scared of? what wooden boards falling down 
That's literally the worst <laughs> part of the Halloween Horror Nights. They have the wooden boards Spoiler. up. And they just slap down super loud. It hurts my eardrums. And it's like a jump scare, though. It's it startles a jump scare, you. Yeah, it just startles the shit out of me. And I'm just like, <gasps> I can't. And I know when one's coming. Because, again, like I said, I used to work at a house that had two of them or something like that. Yeah. And I literally I have to cover my ears or I'm just going to jump. Because that is the worst part of it. But, okay, no, back to Universal Monsters. Because we went on a little tangent there. <laughs> um, no, the first time we went on it, great jump scares. Really good, really good stuff. I love the costumes. I love everything that's going on. Um, the second time we went on through there, we had a group of um, teenagers, I guess, walking through. Oh, yeah. They, they must have been. Because so I remember funny. I was like, how old do you think they are? And you said, I think they're like 15 because they talked about just getting their, their driver's license or, or no, something. Their, their permit or something like oh, that. It, it was the funniest thing. So, like, we were annoyed at first. We were like, oh, my God, we're going to have to go through them. They think they're all cool. They're trying to impress each other. It's really funny. Hmm. Um, and they're going to the house. They're all jumped up in a little ball trying to get through the thing. And all this, all, all they're getting all the scares because everyone sees that they're scared. The little boys are screaming super high. It was the funniest thing. We, we didn't get uh, like any scares. No, I mean, just watching their reactions. Hilarious. It was very entertaining. Yeah. Um, I'm just reading like some little fun facts. Mm-hmm. They claim they, this website claims that this is one of the longest houses in Halloween Horror Nights history. I don't know if I felt that coming for sure. That's, That's what I'm saying. Left. Like, I feel like the witch one, but maybe that I felt, maybe that one feels so long because I'm just like, is it over? This house is boring. Oh, yeah. Maybe. And like, there's not a lot of scares. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It was a cool house. And again, it feels like you're like walking through a crypt. It's very like tight. Mm-hmm. Um, I think oh at God. one point they said that like all three of them jump at you at the same time. You yeah. know, what would have been cool. Well, you don't know that on the lore, right? I guess it wouldn't make sense if you don't know the back history of the house, but if the like for the werewolf got the amulet, mm-hmm. if he like transformed somehow into a human at the end, that'd be cool. Yeah, I don't know. Dracula and the mummy could just yell at you, I guess. <laughs> Can yell. Yeah, but but yeah, that's our number two pick. We took a minute on that one, but <clears throat> number one. It's a good house. Number one that leaves us with one house left. Actually, I I'm not saying this one wasn't good. I do think it was good, but I would not have even thought that this was going to be up here at all. No, it wasn't like it wasn't on my radar. So this is the Horrors of Blum House. Mm-hmm. Um and they've done a Horrors of Blum House house like Before. three or four times at this mm. point. Um and they circulate around the Blum House movies. So like Sinister, Insidious, um The Purge is mm-hmm. obviously one that they've done time and time again in different iterations. And to be honest, that's the reason why I it wasn't on my radar. Every time I've done the Purge one, well, that's what I'm saying. It just is like always it flops for me. It always flops. Oh, what's that one? The 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 one that you rewind, Happy Death Day or something. Oh like yeah, that, Happy right? Death Day. They did that one. Did they do that one twice? No, I think they only did it once. Are you sure? I thought they did it twice. I don't know. Um, but it's always like there's just like so much going on. Like it's like they try to throw everything in that they can. Mm-hmm. And it's just, like, almost annoying. And you're like, this is just, like, dumb. And, like, they always mash it together. Like, The Purge and Happy Death Day. Everything is mashed together. Mm-hmm. And there's no clear line. And I also feel like I don't really care about those movies. So, unless you know the movies, the house doesn't really mean much. It's not really scary. Right. And to be honest, I don't even think those movies are scary to me. No. But, again, like, that's why this is interesting. So, this year, The Horrors of Blum House, it's based off of two movies – um, one of them is Freaky. Mm-hmm. Which one did that come out? I don't know. I'll tell you right here. It says it came out in... <laughs> this is saying 2022. No, I don't know when it came out. I mean, maybe. I don't know. But let me preface this by saying Christian and I both have not seen either of these movies yet. No, no, we have um, not. But the first one that it's based off of is Freaky. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know that one is supposed to be like a horror movie comedy adaption of Freaky Friday. In that there is a serial killer and a girl that like swap places. Really? Mm-hmm. I didn't know that. And so like the serial killer is in the girl's body and the girl is in the serial, serial killer's body. Mm. Um, but that's what that one is. And then the second one is um, Black it's about, Phone, is Black Phone mm-hmm. uh, which that one came out this year, I think. Right. And it is on Peacock. Um, and I want to watch that one. <laughs> Why did you say it like that? Peacock. Peacock. Um, but that's on a streaming service, so I know I can watch that one. And it does look good. That has Ethan Hawke in it. Um, but yeah, we haven't seen either of these movies. What? You look like a young Ethan Hawke. You're so annoying. <laughs> Just because I have a middle part and no makeup on. That's so rude. No, it's a joke. 
Yeah, whatever. Uh, but Black Phone is the other one it's based All off right. of. So I haven't seen either of these movies, so I didn't know what to expect. Mm-hmm. And I also thought because I haven't seen the movies, I'm not going to understand the and, house. And, uh, I didn't think it was going to be interesting. I think it was just going to flop. Uh huh. Like and you think it's times. just going to be all of like the screaming. It's all blended together. It's just like a loud, annoying house. I feel like that's what it's been year after year. Mm-hmm. But no, this house <sighs> it was, was really good. Really good. It was really dark. It had a lot of stuff. A lot of wooden block doors <laughs> falling down, and scaring me. Yeah, um, that good scares. They're all like they're all just hidden. They were really good. And like we waited, I think, over an hour for this house. Mm-hmm. This is also a house in um, this is like the first time that they've had this house in this area of the park in the last few years, because mm-hmm. this takes up place and takes up space. I'm sorry. Um, inside of the Fast and Furious queue. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was cool. And so we waited a very long time for this house, winding in and out of this queue. And we we're like, I hope this is going to pay off. And then, like you said, it did. Lots of good scares. Lots of like the the wooden dropping walls, yeah, doors. Very dark corners. Um, people, mm-hmm. ju- uh, the black phone people jumping up everywhere. Yeah. You have like, you go through this one hallway. It's just completely dark. Completely dark. Like, I don't know why. Like, it was just like scary. So good. Yeah. Which is like dumb. Like, thinking about it. Like, why is like this? Because. It was the same person with the same mask, I feel like, for most of the scares, too. Right. But it was just, I don't know. Something about that house is just so good. 10 out of 10, would recommend, and yeah. I'm going to keep on doing it. I can't wait for our friends to come down and for um, your dad to come down mm-hmm. to see how they react. Spoilers, those are the guests. Yeah, I do want to watch the movie. I don't think you need to watch the movie, I guess, to enjoy the house, which I think that's another just good point. The scares were so good, it didn't really matter. Right, yeah. And that's... I guess that's what they should be. Well, that's what I would hope for. Yeah. You know, I shouldn't have to worry about like, the okay, lore of, of like Fiesta de Chupacabra and I'm still not even scared about? regardless yeah. of what it's about or not. Um, but the other thing with the, the horrors of Blumhouse too, it was like, you went through the freaky house and then like you walked out of it and then you're like in a little tiny, mini you're like cr- in a little mini queue and then you walk into, yeah. Like they separated them yeah. for sure. Like you're like, you're walking into the freaky house right now. Mm-hmm. Then you exit the freaky house. You think you're done. Mm-hmm. You go into the little tiny queue and it says right there, black phone. Yeah. It's like, a, like, oh my it's God, like a I'm two and one house. and you actually feel like you're doing a two 10 out of 10. One. Like that's, that's such a cool concept. Yeah, it was neat. I feel like before, like they didn't do that with the happy death day and with the, um, mm-hmm. no, no, they just all slammed it together and then that was it. You're like, oh, now I'm over here. But no, for sure. 10 out of 10. That's the number one house for now. For now. That was a, that was a big surprise. I would not have thought that the horrors of Blum House would be my number one house mm-hmm. if you would have asked me before going to this event. Right. I probably would have told you that would have been my least favorite number house. 10, yeah, for sure. Really yeah. weird. Well, a few tips if you guys want to enjoy a lot more houses and you guys aren't buying the express passes. If like for instance, if you're only going one day, or if you're going multiple days and you just want to do more houses, mm-hmm. definitely go early. Um, if you're an annual pass holder, you get to go in before the park closes for the guests Mm -hmm. and stay in the little corral areas, the holding areas. Right. Um, but also if you, you're not an annual pass holder and you, you can pay $35 for the scream early ticket, get in those little, again, corral (laughs) holding areas, the holding tank. Yeah. And, um, and we went there, we did coven real quick. We did, um, the Dia de los Muertos. No, that's the bar. Sorry. The Chupacabra one. Mm-hmm. We did the Fisherman. Fisherman. No, sorry. The Dead Man's War- Pier. Jesus. <laughs> Where am I? Are these new houses that they <laughs> and, and the Halloween house. All in the matter of an hour, right? Yeah. We, that was the most that we got done in one night. Otherwise, we've only been able to get... Two or three houses done. Yeah, three at the most. Usually, the like most, yeah. one or two. It's just because it's so busy. You're, you're when you're and you're like, do I want to wait an hour and almost two hours for a house? Yeah. No, probably not. So, I think those nights we end up getting food. Yeah. Um, and, I mean, and that's the thing too. If you, I mean, if you don't like doing houses, obviously that's the main appeal. But you can do the scare zones. You can go around and eat the food and watch the shows. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a really good event, and that's why we look forward to it year after year. Right. Um, it is getting really long for this podcast, but I also still wanted to talk about a couple of the food items, right? I mean, I'm fine with it. Okay, cool. If so, you're still with us, thank you. Yeah. Thanks for staying for this long. And I mean, you guys can always pause, go do whatever you have to do. Come back to us <laughs> later on. Just listen to us. We will. I mean, unless you when guys you drive interested. home when you're bored. Yeah, exactly. So anyways, the All Halloween right. Horror Nights food. I was going to say speed round Halloween Horror Nights food. What do you have to say about it? Uh, pizza skulls, really good. The pizza skull is good. Pizza fries. Really that good. is like, Top uh, tier. that's like a cult favorite Halloween Horror Night mm-hmm. food. Um, what else do we have? 
We didn't have it this year, but another one is the Twisted Tater. Okay, so the, oh, I was about to say, then why are you bringing it up? But you're, it, it is I have there it every year right now. And Twisted Tater is usually a really good, reliable one. Very salty sometimes, though. Yeah. Hey, anyways, really good. What else did we have? The tamal was really good. Uh-huh. Um, it was a little pricey. I'm, I'm I'm just gonna say the truth for real. It was a pricey tamal. I mean, it's theme park food. Sure, fine. But if you're really hungry, definitely I recommend that. Um, the chicharrones that you had are good. The burning skull drink, ten out of ten. You'll have a lot. You can get two. You'll probably be done for the night. Okay, but my favorite thing that they have this year is the lacto cooler. The lacto cooler is really beer. good. I don't know how to describe it. It's like a sour tart. I said it's like a sour spree. It's like a sour spree, but it's a beer. It's really good. Mm-hmm. Um, um, ow, that one night we had like what five, <laughs> six, seven. I don't know. We were we were going at it. We that were night. going strong at those theme park and prices. It's sour, <laughs> it's sour, it but it's so, so good. good. Yeah. Um, is there anything else that they had that um that one the goo no what's it called the goo the gaba goo <laughs> <laughs> no it's the drink remember <gasps> oh another one is the the squash um dumplings oh yeah the little boo bun little boo bun mm, I don't know how I felt about that one it was okay mm. oh Maisie's walking around how's going on okay um and the drink that we had there too that I had there it's that green one. The bog uh, juice. The bog slime. Bog slime number two or something mm-hmm. like that. There's a lot uh, of... I, didn't, I don't know how I felt about uh, that one. I don't know. There, I will say this year, though, I know we said it in the very beginning, but there, I think, is the most food and mo- most drinks that they've had. Mm-hmm. Like, there's options everywhere. Did we, did we have any other drinks? Mm-hmm. Uh, I know we sat down... Um, I think you had the, the ghoul juice. The ghoul juice? Yeah. Sure. And they had a pecan pie ale. Oh, I thought, yeah. I thought I would like it. I don't know about I that. Like, I ended up kind of liking it at the end. I'm going to be reminded <laughs> I was going to say, it tasted like a Bath and Body Works candle. Yeah. But it was good at the end. I don't know. You can fine. really taste it, though. Like, that's the whole thing. It's like, it's so weird because it tastes funny, funky. And then, like, mm, yeah, I can taste funky the pie. Funky like sour. Funky like sour. I don't know. My favorite thing, I think, this year is the lacto cooler. Mm. And if you want a portable option, the pizza skull was really good. You, you know what? Something I really want to try. What? The peanut drink that they have right there where you get the pizza fries. The Revenge of the Circus Peanut. Sure, yeah. It's I just have a really peanut. good memory. You just have a really I, shitty I memory. I really do not, cannot retain a single thing. <laughs> That's really good that you know that. But no, what what <laughs> what what is it even? I don't do know, you like peanut butter whiskey or something in yeah, it. Yeah, you're Lime like that, that sounds like gross. It didn't sound good. I want to try it. You, you never ask know. the guy. You're like, does it? Is it good? He's like, well, it sells. Yeah, so <laughs> tells me nothing. I don't know if anyone drinks it. You're probably like drink take a sip and toss it i don't know i want to try it for sure i don't know the, um, vi- the vibes are good this year the food is good houses are good scare mm-hmm. zones are good i like how we started off the podcast mm, man it was all right and they were like yeah everything was amazing no, it was good it's a, it's an enjoyable time every single time i go to halloween or nights i'm excited it's always a good it's time. a good time for sure when have i ever said it's a bad year that's true you know mm-hmm. obviously it's the one thing I feel like I look forward to every year. Mm-hmm. You do too, I would think. Uh, a couple things too on um, the merchandise, right? We got a, we got a lot the of merchandise. Merchandise we, is you know, really good this about, year too. Uh, we did talk about the tribute store, store a little bit, but the tribute yeah. store just like even if you're not going to buy anything, go through it because it's amazing. Okay, if you're afraid of haunted houses and you want to go through one still, but not be scared, go through the tribute store. Right. It's like the it's the same feel and especially this year's but it's so well themed mm-hmm. the merchandise very good this year yeah I, I bought two three shirts we bought several shirts actually my favorite shirt i think i bought is the the one that's like an ode to halloween horror nights food and it has it's the picture like, of like yeah, and the twisted tater the blinky cups yeah we got if you ma- know you know matching shirts for that one yeah oh well we bought how many we have like two or three blinky cups now too and, the thing the souvenir cups get the blinky cup you yep. get the the cheaper refills mm-hmm. oh also a really good tip is the popcorn buckets oh yeah if you buy the popcorn buckets we're just throwing all the tips and tricks at you, you guys right need to now. go over there and, and just this is like the bonus feature exactly right here yeah <laughs> you made it this far. <laughs> <laughs> no but um for sure get a popcorn bucket the refills are what three bucks yeah and it's really good that's a really good deal um snack for the line yeah for sure mm-hmm. um they, you were not fast though <laughs> No, I know. Okay, but yeah, 
uh, that's our Halloween Horror Nights should. overview. Yeah, we'll wrap it up. Like like we mentioned, we're probably going to have a couple more episodes that feature Halloween Horror Nights content. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll get some reviews and some reactions. And if there are things we didn't talk about this time, we'll squeeze them into the others. Mm-hmm, for sure. Uh, we don't know if it's going to be two separate episodes coming out or if it's going to be one mashed up episode with <laughs> all, our, all of our guests. We'll see. We, we got some people that are dying to get on the podcast right now. Some, yeah, dying. Uh, real quick before we leave if you guys didn't like our rankings if you guys have food recommendations if you guys have drink recommendations something that we didn't mention let us know dm us on instagram we're half day adventures and if you want to see some cool halloween horror nights content check out our tiktok at half day adventures as well um you can also reach out to us on uh, our email hda podcast at outlook.com yeah send us a little something yeah um and until next time stay spooky Hell yeah, stay spooky.